This ride that features the spring water trail offers a 17, 26, and 41 mile option. We start at the Selwood Riverfront Park and head about a mile up Umatilla Street to 19th Street and then to the Springwater Trail. At Bell Road, there's a dedicated stoplight for cyclists. Be sure to use it as it incredibly reduces the risk of right hooks on this otherwise dangerous intersection. At 82nd is the Cartlandia food carts, which have some really interesting food options. And just past mile eight, there's the entrance to Powell Butte. This will be the turnaround point for the riders wishing to do the 17 mile option. The rest of us will continue on to Gresham. After lunch in Gresham, we'll retrace our route west on the Springwater Trail. At about mile 20, the 26 mile riders will continue straight while the 41 mile riders will turn left onto the I-205 bike path. At 92nd and Flavel, we'll leave the bike path for about a quarter of a mile, but we'll pick it up again at 92nd and Crystal Springs Boulevard. It's easy to miss the junction at Crystal Springs Boulevard. Just remember, if you pass under I-205, you've gone too far. The I-205 bike path is not always straightforward. In several places, you have to follow roundabouts in order to avoid street crossings. The correct route isn't always obvious, so it's best to study your route before you actually ride it, until you're familiar with the route. At mile 20, you'll pass by the Clackamas Town Center, and shortly after, you have some tricky crossings at Sunnyside and Sunnybrook Roads. About a mile after crossing Sunnybrook Road, we'll get to 82nd and the Milwaukee Expressway. Electronic, trotting, trotting, trotting. We'll cross onto 82nd Street at Lawnfield. Be very careful at this intersection as there's a lot of truck traffic and they seem to have a lot of other things on their minds besides bicycles. After about a mile on 82nd Street, we'll turn right on Carver Road and head back over the I-205 freeway. It's a little complicated getting back on the trail. After about two more miles on the bike path, we'll turn right and rejoin 82nd Street and ride into Gladstone. At the end of 82nd Street, we'll cross over the Clackamas River. From here, we'll have a great view of the notorious High Rocks Park. 
after the bridge, there's a very short trip on Washington Street to the bike path on the right. We'll follow the bike path for about a mile along the Clackamas River until we get to Main Street in Oregon City. Here we can either turn right and head to 99E and up and over the Clackamas River or in this case turn left and head up Singer Hill to the Singer Hill Cafe. The route we take here is to turn left on 15th Street and after crossing Washington Street we'll turn right and deal with a few very steep short ramps. While these ramps are only 8 to 9 percent they feel a lot steeper. The ramp on the right turn on Madison Street is only at about 8% grade, but to me it feels like I'm climbing Everest. After a right turn onto 8th Street, you're rewarded with a great view of Portland to the right and the end of the climb. At the top of the hill, we'll be passing through the McLaughlin neighborhood, a neighborhood rich with historic homes, including the beautiful Elizabeth Clark House. And at mile 30, we'll stop at the Singer Hill Cafe. After leaving the Singer Hill Cafe, we'll take a fast descent down Singer Hill Road. Be sure to watch for the left turn at the end of the road and some nasty railroad tracks. Then we'll turn right on Main Street and head north back to Portland. Just before the 99E bridge, we'll take a service road that'll take us up to 99, where we'll turn right and head north over the Clackamas River. Just after crossing the Clackamas River, we'll cross 99E and head north on River Road. At mile 33, there's a very short jog on Glen Echo Road, where we'll continue north on River Road. After another mile, we'll turn right onto Rothy Road, drop down the hill, and turn left onto the Trolley Trail. The newly developed Trolley Trail is a nice alternative to riding on River Road. After about a mile and a half, the trail links with Arista Road for a while, but after passing through Oak Grove, you'll rejoin the trail at Courtney Avenue. After about another mile, the trail is interrupted due to light rail construction. So we'll turn left on the Park Street and head back up to River Road. Shortly after turning right on River Road, we'll have a very fast 120 foot drop off of the bluff. Be sure to be aware of surrounding traffic on this very fast descent. At the bottom, we'll turn left on Bluebird Street, head through the Island Station neighborhood, and going behind the Kellogg Water Treatment Plant, we'll rejoin the trolley trail and 99E. This section of the trail has a great view looking north along the Willamette River towards Portland. Here we'll rejoin the trolley trail for a short way, then turn left onto 17th Street for a two mile ride back to Selwood. Traffic on 17th Street, we turn right on Lynn, left on 19th, and then a left on Umatilla for the ride back to the Selwood Riverfront Park. 
Thanks for watching.